Today's video is on using video cameras in technical diving. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. If you are watching this video, you need to ask yourself a question. And the question is whether or not you should actually be videotaping while you're technical diving. Video recording while conducting a technical dive can vastly increase the level of a diver's task loading. In some cases, this increased task level loading can result in tragedy. In the recent case of Brian Buggy carrying a camera on a technical dive actually resulted in his death. This is well documented in the video, if only, that is available on YouTube. To conduct our training in the safest possible manner, we never allow students to video record or otherwise take cameras during a technical diving course. And we also never video record during a technical dive ascent. Only you can decide if your skill level is sufficient to record while technical diving. This includes properly responding to any emergencies which may arise. Lastly, you must accept the fact that your camera gear is disposable. If necessary, you must be willing to jettison your camera equipment. Having said that, we will now discuss video cameras, camera housings, and techniques for videoing technical dives. There are a number of different video cameras suitable for technical diving on the market. These include the GoPro Hero series, the Paralenses, and a few others. We have stabilized on the GoPro Hero 9 and 10 series cameras. This is due to the fact that these cameras possess a front-facing screen. This screen is extremely useful in the event that you are taking selfie stick videos. A wide variety of accessories are also made for these cameras, including deep water housings. The first housing that we'll discuss is the GoPro Super Suit. This is a relatively inexpensive housing at $49. This housing has one O-ring and is rated to 196 feet. I have actually taken this particular model housing down to 250 feet without any issues. This case is perfectly suitable for shallower technical dives. A more robust GoPro housing with a deeper depth limit between 450 and 650 feet is the German made T housing. This housing is approximately $300. It is robustly constructed of machined aluminum. Unfortunately, it only has one O ring, and the housing catch has no safety mechanism. Unfortunately, my own T housing is beginning to experience leaking issues after less than six months of use. I attribute this to the single O-ring and the hinge closure design. Although some divers are probably very happy with their T-housing, I cannot recommend this particular design for technical diving. The third GoPro camera housing that we'll be discussing today is manufactured by ISADA. Like the T-housing, the ISADA is also made of machined aluminum. The ISADA design includes two O-rings. It utilizes a pin rather than a hinge design. To open the case, the catch must be pulled out and rotated. This results in a very robust and safe closure mechanism. The ISADA also has a cold shoe mount on the top of the housing for accessories such as video lights. The housing is also rated for approximately 650 feet. 
the Isada housing is highly recommended for technical diving. Video techniques are categorized as being either active or passive. Active techniques involve normally holding the camera, while passive techniques do not. A camera tray is a common piece of videography equipment for recreational divers. The tray can be used to mount the GoPro housing and the stocks can be used to mount high power video lights. A video rig of this type can undoubtedly produce high quality videos. Unfortunately, many technical divers will find this type of rig too cumbersome to use in a technical dive. A second active video recording technique is the use of a selfie stick. In this case, the GoPro and any lights are mounted on the end of an adjustable stick. The stick has the advantage of being able to be used for self-recording. This is something not normally possible with a camera tray. The front screen on the GoPro 9 and 10 allows the diver to properly frame the video recording. The selfie stick can also be much more compact than a camera tray and the selfie stick can be stored alongside a decompression cylinder when not in use. Video recording while using passive techniques can be substantially simpler and safer than using an active technique. This is because little or no interaction is required with passive techniques. Common passive techniques include the use of chest harnesses and headbands. Chest harnesses are subject to parallax issues, which means that what you are videoing is not necessarily what you want. Headband techniques may not be secure. In addition, exhaust bubbles may interfere with the video recording. For passive video recording techniques, we have come to prefer regulator mounting. In this image, the GoPro 9 is attached underneath the regulator exhaust port. The GoPro passively records in the same plane as your regulator position. Because the GoPro is positioned away and below the regulator, exhaust bubbles do not appear in the video images. If the GoPro is mounted in this manner, it will be necessary to invert the image during video processing. In summary, we recommend the use of the GoPro 9 and 10 in an ISADA underwater housing. And we recommend the use of a selfie stick over a camera tray and prefer a regulator mounting for passive video recording. With the proper training, experience, and equipment, video recording can be done safely during technical dives. However, we recommend no recording by students at all during training and no active recording during ascents and decompression stops. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Thanks for watching.